Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Civilization VI. Today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different from usual. We're going to be playing on the Terra map, which spawns two continents. Um, one of them is empty, and one of them is full. And we're going to be playing as Coupe, and we're going to be banking on finding that empty continent and settling it and turning it into a beautiful forested oasis of culture, faith, and tourism. Just to roll through the map settings, we'll be playing on DD difficulty starting in the ancient era on standard game speed with 18 city states, maximum disaster intensity, a terra map, huge size, abundant resources, standard world age, legendary start position, standard temperature, wet and low sea level with all victories activated and all standard settings. Here's the map seed. Let's go. Pack it up, pack it in. Before we begin, let's take a moment to talk about the Maori special abilities. The first one is Coupe's Voyage. Begin the game in an ocean tile, gain a free builder and plus one population when settling your first city. The palace receives plus three housing and plus one amenity and plus two science and plus two culture per turn before settling your first city. Pretty standard stuff, we're going to be standing in the ocean, wandering around looking for a place to settle our cities. We also get mana, which means we begin the game with the sailing and shipbuilding technologies, which means we can pretty much instantaneously begin building quadriremes if we so choose, and we'll be able to enter ocean tiles and embarked units get plus two movement speed. Unimproved woods and rainforests gain plus one production, that's very, very valuable, and they get an additional plus one production at, at mercantilism and conservation, which means you're going to want to have a strong culture gain this game, because culture will translate into production. We also get plus one food from fishing boats, and they will culture bomb adjacent tiles. However, there is one downside, we cannot harvest resources, so that means things like bananas, things like stone, things like all that sort of stuff we cannot harvest. We also can't earn great riders, which means we don't really have to worry about uh, getting you know, writers at all this game. We don't have to worry about shuffling around great works. We can very much so focus on just getting as many settlers out and building as many cities and getting the theater squares up to generate as much culture and tourism as possible. We also get access to the Toa, the Pa, and the Mare. We'll talk about the Mare later, but basically it is a unique building that gives us a ton of culture and faith from tiles with possible features or natural wonders. Tiles with possible features are forests, rainforests, things like that. And after flight, we get plus one tourism for all the tiles with a feature or natural wonder, which is pretty damn nice. We're not gonna worry about the Toa. The Toa isn't a very important unit. However, we are gonna try and surmise whereabouts we are on the map by doing a little bit of exploration. Now, I don't wanna just jump in and settle the first piece of land that I spot. I'm allowed to wander around a little bit and get a better idea and a better lay of the land. I definitely am in the north, so I'm gonna wanna come south a little bit to try to find a piece of land that isn't in the tundra. Ideally, what I'm looking for is perhaps some kind of natural wonder or a really good spot to settle with good fishing tiles and adjacent and adjacent resources and stuff like that. This does not look like a good spot over here, so I'm going to keep looking. So there is some citrus. I could settle on the citrus. It's not a bad spot. However, the banana, the, the, the wheat there makes me a little bit less sure if that's what I want to do. Yeah, I'm going to have a hard time putting down districts if I settle on that spot there. But it's honestly, it's probably an okay to throw a city down. It'll have really good food and pretty good production. I think this is a pretty reasonable spot to throw down a city, so that's what I'm going to do. There's a tribal village over here, so we are going to want to grab ourselves a scout to pick that up. And we do start with a builder. Now, ideally, I think what we want to do is purchase a fishing tile and get that improved pretty early because we get a lot of benefit from fishing tiles. Uh, but I think I will go ahead and improve this wheat right here in order to grab myself the irrigation boost as well as another tile uh, with three food one production because that'll compensate for the fact that I'm working this one food three production tile. As Coupe we could go ahead and straight away start working on settlers but I'm going to pick up two scouts because I want to be able to know where good spots for settling is. We're also going to be beelining straight for celestial navigation which is why I want to get these two fishing resources online if I can. But in the meantime it's usually a good idea to do a little bit of scouting with your first builder because he's not always necessary and the sea tends to be fairly safe in the very very early game where you don't have to worry too much about any dangerous stuff. I definitely want to go grab that tribal village here so I'll have this scout in position to jump into the water and grab it over the next couple of turns. I definitely feel like I have found the island where the other players are not which is going to be a very interesting game for me. I also found a barbarian encampment right there now that does need to be cleared out ASAP and I don't have a warrior in the local area to get rid of it so I am probably gonna have to pick up a unit to deal with that. There's Code of Laws which is our opening thing. I think I might plug in God King to get an early Pantheon here and I'll also grab Discipline. 
Although I could go for survey here, which isn't too bad because I don't plan to fight any barbs. And I am about to get double experience on this guy. And I got a relic. Okay, I can switch away from God King pretty quickly this game. I'm going to go for maritime industries because I have the ability to build a navy. And getting a couple of boats early seems like it would serve me pretty well. Having a boat uh, like a quadrireme would help me clear this out. And I'm also going to be able to get this fishing boat right here to get me a four food, one food uh, one one gold tile, which is going to allow me to grow my city really, really rapidly, which is exactly what I'd want to do with the Maori, because we have a ton of housing to take advantage of and some really, really nice yields on our tiles, thanks to the bonus production we get from unimproved uh, features. We have found Palenque, and we were the first to find them, of course, so we get plus two science per turn, which is very nice, a very nice boost to our ability. Unfortunately, a uh, hurricane did blow through my city here and damage this fishing tile, but I will be able to repair it won't have too many issues. I think I'm going to go for the fast monument this game so that I can get the Maori unlocked a little bit quicker, which is drama and poetry. I'm going to kind of skip settlers for a little bit because I need to I need to get a little bit of a navy. So I want to get foreign trade as fast as possible to take care of all that. I might go like monument settler and then pick up a couple of quadriremes to clear out some of these coastal barb camps and just generally defend my local area. We also ran into Jerusalem and we were the first person to meet those two, so we're getting a ton of faith per turn already at this stage of the game, which kind of might point me in the direction of going for a religion here. And I am about to unlock the holy site. So that could be a bit of a redirection for me. Um, I, I don't know if that's what I'm going to do. But it's certainly an option. There's the boost for foreign trade. We managed to find another continent, which is brilliant over here. So it looks like there might be another landmass down here to the southwest. In terms of Pantheon, I feel like um, God of the Sea here makes a lot of sense playing Coupe. I could go for religious settlements, but I'm not under pressure to settle a bunch of cities. So I think I'm going to go ahead and take God of the Sea here because that'll make my fishing boats absolutely incredible. Plus one production from them is really, really good in the early game because now this fishing tile is yielding an insane amount of resources if you compare it to a normal tile that I would be working at this point of the game. There is Cardiff and that's plus two production that's going to help us building all of the infrastructure like the monument and stuff like that. You can see it shaved a turn off right here. It was saying five and now it says four. So finding Cardiff shaved a turn off. I also found a barb camp here that I might try to take out with my warrior. There's Cahokia as well, giving me another plus four gold per turn, which is going to be very helpful in order to get enough gold to improve this fish tile over here to keep growing my capital. Huh, looks like I might not be able to get this. Uh, can I reset my government? Would an extra five combat strength here actually mean I kill this? So if the cost to reset my government is 40, and I'll also get the bent. So if I reset my government, I'll get about 30 gold from killing this. It'll cost me 40. Not only that, but I'll also get the boost for military tradition and potentially. No, it looks like none of these guys want me to kill it, but I think it is worth it to spend the 40 gold, switch out to discipline. I probably should have switched out before. That way I have the plus five combat strength that'll allow me to kill. Oh my God, I hate this game. I don't want to talk about it. I should have also switched away from God King. I'm, I'll only have it for another two turns. It's not that big of a deal. God. Okay, remain calm, Potato. The game is already conspiring against you. There is foreign trade, so we can get our hands on traders now as well. We're going to go ahead and plug in God King and Maritime Industries. That way we can build quadriremes in only five turns. And I think I'll just get a single quadrireme to help me clear out this barb camp. I'm going to be working on craftsmanship now as well, because I'm about to get the boost for that by improving this fishing tile. I just need a few more turns of gold and I'll have enough to buy that tile. Found another city-state. Looks like it's Me Mexico, Mexico City which is very nice. It's another plus two production in our capital. We're going to be trying to do all of the city-state quests that we can. Like, for example, they want games and recreation. They want a quadrireme. Uh, Mexico wants a trade route. I'm going to have a, maybe a hard time sending that trade route without a harbor, but we'll see what we can do. We have enough gold to purchase this fishing tile. I'm going to buy it and then improve it. That'll be another culture bomb borders. And I do want to get this crabs online as well as these turtles over here, but I might even settle a city on this citrus as well. Although, yeah, that might not be a terrible idea. This would be a really good second city right here, even though it is a little bit close to my capital and not super useful long term. We'll have to think about that. There is Geneva, another plus two science return and a tribal village and Leventa. Oh man, I'm just finding all the city states. I kind of, I like in fairness, this game is kind of rigged, but I just thought it would be a fun game to give you guys ideas for games that you could play as well. 
we just unlocked or we just built the quadrireme giving us plus three era score which is fantastic and i'll go ahead and start using this to clear up this barb camp here question is do i want a second one or do i want to get my harbor up really really early i think getting the harbor up pretty early here would be good for state workforce boosts so uh i kind of want to wait until i have early empire for the settler production I might go light on cities here in the very early of the game. Granted a free recon unit, not exactly what I was looking for, but I'll take faster movements in rainforests and maybe this scout can go find the other island so I can start building relationships with the other players in the game. Let's place our harbor and get that underway because that's going to give us a lot of gold. And it's also, if we manage to get a golden age, that'll be a really nice boon to our economy as well. I don't think I have anything I want to change in here. I think I'm pretty happy with the way my economy is set up. I think the only thing I would change is maybe plug in discipline here because I don't plan to build boats in the immediate future. I'm kind of working on infrastructure. I'm doing things kind of just a little bit differently than standard. Now that we have celestial navigation, that's going to be the primary way that we get trade routes this game. I think we're going to come back here and just pick up some basic stuff like animal husbandry, seeing where horses are, stuff like that. Hey, there's the Eye of the Sahara giving me another little bit of error score. I do need to get another six, and I think I can manage that if I'm very careful with how I use my units. Let's kill this unit with my Quadrireme. That will give me a boost towards naval tradition, and then I can clear out this barb camp with my scout, getting me another three error score and the boost for military tradition, which is very nice. Wow, really good campus over here near these geotherms. I'm going to pick up mining and then head towards irrigation. I think these are really good early game uh, techs to pick up for growth and all that sort of jazz. Ooh, another barb camp and a tribal village over here. Ah, man, they stepped in the way, so I won't be able to clear that barb camp. I will get the tribal village, which is nice. And getting a free builder is pretty damn good, too, because I could go ahead and get this crab's tile if I really wanted to, which isn't bad, especially considering I'm playing coupe and I have the fishing boat pantheon. I could also get this horses online. I think the crab... So if I get the crabs online first, the crabs will help pay for the horses faster. So we're going to do crabs and then uh, send this builder to go get those crabs. And then that'll help me pay for the horses tile later. Oh. There's mining as well as the boost towards state workforce because we just finished our harbor. Now the question is, how quickly do I want to get trade routes? Um, do I want to get the lighthouse right now? What I'm kind of thinking is that I want to get a really fast government plaza. And I think where I'm going to place my government plaza is it's not a very good spot. But I'm thinking of placing it right there. Because eventually I might want to put my uh, theater square right there. And this will give it a little bit of adjacency. Not an amazing amount, but just a little bit. Of course, I want to put farm triangles in here and stuff. So I think this works pretty well for what I'm planning to do this game. I have four turns until I want to start building the government plaza. So I think I'm going to squeeze out a settler here. I could alternatively squeeze out a trader. Although I'm worried I don't have any cities in range to trade with. So I'll get the settler first. Another tribal village for me. There's the boost for the wheel. Very helpful. And we found Russia. Hello, Russia. It is an honor to meet you. We'll exchange information on the location of our capitals. Russia has a pretty big army and he's pretty far away. Uh, but I might be able to sell him my oranges for four gold per turn. Why, sure thing. You can have my oranges. Thank you so much, Russia. And here's the Ottomans. It's an honor to meet you as well. We shall set... Oh, I should have sent them a delegation. Although I'm trying to save my gold. And I'm not too worried if they don't like me too much at this phase of the game. I can work on those relationships as time goes forward. There's pottery as well as my capital just reached six population. Meaning I have the boost for early empire. I am going to want to try to get to a higher uh, thing. Because I'm, I'm trying to delay until I have the um, settler thingy. And I have Magnus established in my capital. So I can just pump out settlers for days. That's kind of the plan right now that we're working on. There is state workforce. Perfect. So we can get to work on the government plaza next turn once the settler is finished. And uh, that will start us along the pathway of getting political philosophy done with as well. I think I'm going to save up my gold now after I get this horse tile. I'm going to save up my gold to be able to purchase a monument. And I might even try to sell like horses and stuff like that to buy that monument in my next city faster. Because I want to get to political philosophy ASAP. Isn't it a bit weird that sometimes people use like acronyms, like their words, like say a a ASAP or ASAP or not just say as soon as possible, right? I, I don't know, I just a little bit of a weird observation there. In this particular game, I would like to space my cities out quite a bit uh, compared to normal. But my goal is to mostly try to take over this island. And you know what I could go for? I could go for a Petra city. 
uh, up in this sort of location. Although I'm not sure if that's what I really want to do. Certainly, I think I think a settler down here makes sense. There's a perfect harbor. Uh, with a couple of fish tiles in and around here. So I'm going to start sending my settlers around there. We finished our government plaza, but we do have quite a few turns before political philosophy is going to be up. And I think it might be a good time now to get a trader to send to my own city over here to trade with my capital so that this city can get up and running really, really quickly. Hello, Guitarja. Nice to meet you. I am a little bit behind in terms of science and culture and stuff like that. Not too worried about it. The question is, I'm going to go ahead and appoint Pingala early into this game, into my capital, just so I can get that little bit of extra science. And then I'm going to use my next two um, governor titles to get Magnus with the provision promotion. Let's get this city settled. I think this is a good enough spot. It starts right next to the diamonds. You could have a debate over which side of the river you want to settle on. But I think here is just fine. Now I need to save up exactly 240 gold to get the monument in here. I will be placing the harbor in here. I want to get my harbors up very early this game. And I'm going to want to get military training pretty early this game as well to be able to plug in veterancy. Veterancy, of course, is the card that gives you a 30% boost towards harbors and buildings inside them. I'm going to be relying heavily on harbors this game. Russia would like to buy my horses for a little bit of gold. I'm going to accept that deal because every little bit of gold I get gets me closer to buying the monument in Otarapa. There's the wheel giving me access to the heavy chariot and the watermill, as well as another tribal village giving me a governor title. Oh, that is actually ridiculous. That extra governor title means that I'm going to be able to grab researcher on Pingala and still have enough governor titles to grab Magnus with provision. So that's actually really huge, uh, a huge swing for me. Now I could trade with Mexico City and I think I am going to do that because that's six gold per turn will translate me into me being able to get my um, lighthouse up earlier, which will translate into me getting another trade route for Otarapa. So I think that's what I'm going to do. The other thing that I could do is I could send this to Otarapa and get a bunch of food and production in the city and get it up and running faster. Hmm, that's a hard choice. The era is changing in six turns and every time the era changes, you get a new mission from a city state if you have completed its mission. So I think actually getting suzerainty of Mexico City is going to be important in the long term for me. Mainly just for the really helpful boost to uh, what you call it. Uh, like like you get like a bunch of diplomacy and vision and all that sort of stuff. Hmm. This is actually a really significant and difficult choice here. Is choosing where to send my trade route and where to send it. Like wh where to place it and where to send it to. I think considering I have a harbor and a government plaza up here. That represents two food, three production which I think is a higher value than the six gold and the envoy that I get from trading with Mexico City. So I am going to send it to Otarapa and then trade with my capital. Let's get to work on bronze working because revealing iron as a resource puts a little bit more science and production on the map for me. Now I have uh, a decent number of turns until political philosophy, which I think is enough time to get the lighthouse and another trade route. So I'm going to work on that. I'm also going to go ahead and improve the gems here because I have met a bunch of different AIs who I might be able to sell the gems to for a premium. The Ottomans are paying the highest price at five gold per turn. So I'm going to take that deal. All that gold is going to feed into me having an overwhelmingly powerful economy. There's early empire. Now we're not quite ready to plug in the colonization card. I'm waiting until I have political philosophy. I'm only a couple of turns away from getting the monument in Otarapa. And I'm also going to be trading with my capital here for plus two food and plus three production. We did however get the Magnus governor title. So I'm going to want to time that pretty carefully. Pagala just kicked in into my capital, giving me an extra seven, uh, uh, sorry, six culture and six science for my population, as well as an extra 15% of both. So my culture and science now is looking much more competitive with the AI, despite the fact that I'm on like literally two cities. Um, we plan to do a mass settling strategy with uh, the little bit of faith and the golden age that's going to be coming up in four turns. Guitarja also wants to buy horses for me. I'm going to accept that deal. And I now have enough gold to purchase the monument in my second city. And there is the English Empire as well. Pleasure to meet you, London. Oh, Tatarapa. Oh, Tatarapa. We shall purchase a monument in here. And that monument is going to give us an extra little bit of boost of culture to finish off political philosophy sooner. And I might even purchase myself a trader. Plus 20 Diplo favor from a tribal village as well as a promotion on this scout. That 20 Diplo favor, I think, might even sell to Kataja, although the AI tends to not value... Uh, not value Diplo favor very early in the game, but I think I'm going to try to sell that to the Katarja because she'll give me seven gold per turn. And every little bit of gold that I can squeeze out of the AI is going to represent a huge boost to my economy long term. 
here is the classical era golden age just as we unlock ironworking and indeed we found this is actually be a really good industrial zone unfortunately we are going to be putting a um theater square there i would like to get that iron improved it's not a huge priority right now um i could go for the exodus the evangelists what i have to do is kind of count how many religions are gone it looks like three are already gone one by russia one by unmet player and one by indonesia so if I went for Exodus the Evangelists, I would be able to found a religion. Uh, I just counted the number of saves actually going for uh, great people, and it's less than seven. So I could found a religion this game, or I could go for Monumentality and Mass Settle with a little bit of faith I've gained. I think I'm going to go for Monumentality and go for the Mass Settling because it lines up with the strategy that I've been running with since the start of the game. Although that said, I could have gone for some sort of Relic play because I do have access to the Te Koangia, whatever. And I could have gone for like Mahabodhi or something, but I, I don't plan to do much religion this game, even if it is a really good way to generate relics and uh, stuff like that. Perfect. We just researched classical uh, political philosophy as well as writing and upgraded our uh, capital with a um, lighthouse. So we're going to go ahead and switch over now. I'm thinking I might go for autocracy this game. Yeah, since I'm going for like a super powerful capital that's going to pump out settlers, I think going for autocracy makes sense here we're going to pick that up we're going to plug in urban planning i'm also going to plug in conscription just as a temporary measure as well as caravanseries as a temporary measure we will eventually be plugging in um settler production but i think this is a pretty reasonable government just for the short term until we're ready to switch over to a mass settler production and what that means is now we have access to the ancestral hall so in three turns i'm going to want to switch out pingala for magnus because I want the timing on settler production to be perfect. And I could even start producing settlers using my faith right now. Because I don't have to settle them until this uh, building is finished. Alternatively, I could purchase a trader in here with my stuff. Or I could purchase a trader with gold. Hmm. I think I'm going to go ahead and get the settler. Wait until I settle the city. And then trade with my capital to get the extra food and production again. But the really nice thing about finishing the lighthouse is as well, these fish tiles now provide five food and one production, which is crazy. And the crabs are four food, one production, three gold. So I have a really, really strong setup here in my capital. I still need more builders. I'm kind of under working or under improving my tiles and I want to get access to this iron here as well. But I'm trying to be very careful about how I spend my money. For sure, though, the next thing that I want to pick up is drama and poetry to get access to the theater square. That's a huge priority for me. Um, and I'm going to be uh, even prioritizing this over more settlers because I want to get this online as soon as possible. And I'll also be working on military tradition up towards military training. Granary and monument are finished on Otatarapa, or I'll just call that Otarapa just for short. And I think maybe I could work on a harbor. Do I want to get the harbor right now? Or do I want to work on the water mill? The water mill, the earlier you get it, the faster it pays itself off so i feel like the watermill is a really good investment i think a builder would be a really good investment in here as well but i think i'm going to go for the watermill to get the city up and running as fast as possible then i think i'll grab a builder and then the harbor in here faith purchase another settler in my capital while i'm building the ancestral hall although that did reduce the city's population hmm that was maybe a bit of a mistake i should have had magnus in position here not a big deal the city will regrow very quickly time to reassign magnus to the capital I let it overrun a little bit because the population grew and the production time jumped a bit. I think it started working this forest tile again. But I'll, I'll have Pingala in this backup city in, for, for a little while. And I've decided to settle a city right here, as well as right here on this deer tile. Uh, now, you can probably criticize me for settling in the tundra, but this will eventually be a very, very useful place. And plus, it's on a very nice spot right here, uh, just on the edge of tundra and has some decent tiles as well as some fish. So the city, probably not going to be the best city in the short term, but will eventually be, be very useful. Two more turns until I actually plonk the cities down and, you know, finalize them. I'm probably going to want to plug in a naval production card here. Uh, just so I could maybe squeeze out an extra couple quadri reams uh, out of Otarapa to be able to control the ocean a little bit. I've been seeing more barb camps spawn on the coast nearby. And I just want to make sure that none of my tiles get pillaged and stuff like that. Mutual open borders with the Ottomans as well as selling them a few of my diplomatic favor points. Pop up and grab this tribal village for an extra bit of gold. I have some gold in store now and I might use it to build monuments or something. I'm not fully decided on that yet. I could also get my hands on some builders on the cheap. They are fairly cheap this era. 
on the other hand I could use my gold to buy settlers as well so I'm, I'm having a hard time exactly knowing what I want to do with my resources but I'm not under major pressure I can delay those decisions by a couple of turns and not lose out too much we have however just unlocked theater squares and it's critically important to me that I get those theater squares up online actually looking at this I could get rid of this forest which is a really good production tile which kind of sucks to get rid of but I could get rid of this forest plop down a theater square there and then an industrial zone here later on and this will be a really really good industrial zone so I think I'm actually going to modify my strategy a little bit here in light of what's come what, what's come to pass so let's go ahead and use this promotion to promote Magnus we do in fact get free builders when we settle cities now so we're going to plop right down here get our free builder and we're also going to plop right down here get another free builder now unfortunately this does make my builders more expensive but I think it's a worthwhile cost to pay. I think our big objective is to get to feudalism ASAP so I think I'm going to want to build six farms and get monuments up. So I think in these brand new cities I'm going to go straight for monuments. Just eat the gold cost right now get those monuments up early. That'll bring down how long it's going to take me to get to feudalism because if I'm still settling and I'm getting five charge builders out of feudalism uh, that seems like it's going to be extremely powerful for me to snowball out of. I'm going to purchase a builder in my capital city. I will hard build a granary in my capital city. And when the granary finishes, I'll chop into a theater square to boost. I'm also going to swap out of caravansaries and plug in settler production because I will be producing settlers this era. I'm also going to plug out conscription and plug in maritime industry so that I can build boats more efficiently in my second settled city. That'll just help me control my waters and feel a little bit more confident about not getting raided. I do want a granary in Wanganui, so I think I'm going to place the harbour right here. This seems like a pretty good harbour spot. It's right next to the turtles. The only thing is I don't get extra adjacency, so maybe here would be better because I could place the theater square here and get an extra adjacency on my harbor. So that seems like it's a pretty good idea. But we will, of course, work on the granary first. I am going to use the gold to buy the turtles tile, however. Now, that is a very nice turtle tile. Four food, two production, one gold. And that one gold is going to become three gold once we manage to get our hands on cartography. And we will be going up the top half of this tech tree very early into the game to pick up seaports as well as computers for the extra tourism. See if we can snipe this tribal village from underneath the face of this guy. And we actually got a promotion, which is not ideal, but you know, it is what it is. So we are now ready to build the theater square in our capital six turns. What I'm going to do is I'm going to harvest this first, and that should bring this down to three turns. So we can place the theater square there, delete that pin, and now we'll get it in three turns. And we still have two build charges to work with. So by building the uh, the... So by not placing it straight down on top of it, we did have to expend some more resources and do a bit of chopping, but I feel like it's more efficient to do the things the way that I did. I basically delayed the theater square by three turns and spent 90 faith to get a builder in order to chop a forest, get the theater square in the same amount of turns, because I just took three turns off of the build time, and have two build charges left over. So I, I just think it was a little bit more efficient than to just crush the forest with the theater square. Especially if you consider that a builder is worth about 70 production. And I think I chopped for 70 production in there. So I think that was worth it. Let's snipe this barb camp if we can. Perfect. Plus three error score. Now that we've completed the theater square, my goal is to purchase the Mare rather than hard build it. And that's because it, it, it's it's not super important for me right here. I don't have a whole lot of unapproved features that I'm going to be getting a benefit out of. But I will want it eventually. It's just not a priority. But I do want the theater square up and running because that's going to generate me great people points towards my great artists and great musicians. Now, more importantly, it's time to start working on settlers. And the reason for that is I have a ton of production boosts in this city towards building settlers. And I'm also going to start using my faith in gold to get settlers if I can as well. I'm building a 170 production unit, which should take me 10 turns in about five, which means I'm producing settlers in here twice as fast as normal. There's the boost from feudalism by placing two farms down here and four over here. And I just want to get feudalism as soon as possible, uh, right after I get military training. The second hard built settler of the game comes out. Now, we're going to want to kind of cast our settlers far and wide. Like, here's a decent settlement, but I want to I want to kind of spread out and just kind of grab as much of the coastline as possible to act as a barrier to the other AIs in the game. And that's partially why I built these quadriremes here. 
uh, are as escort units from Otarapa. Now that the city has built those escort units, I think it wouldn't be a terrible idea to go ahead and pick up the Mare uh, using the theatre square. The question is, do I want to get the harbour first? And I feel like the theatre square is going to be very, very important to me this game. And I don't really care that much about adjacency and I want to preserve as much of this land as possible. So we'll get to work on that theatre square. I do have an envoy to pick up Suzerainty with one of these guys and hmm, it might be candy because I am going to discover a lot of natural wonders this game. Although I don't really have room for any more relics so that might not be worth it. On the other hand I could pick up Geneva which would give me a significant science boost. I decided to pick up Geneva with my one envoy here to give me a significant science boost. 15% isn't terrible. When you consider a city like Otarapa, I hover over here and you can see I'm getting a 30% boost uh, thanks to Pingala and the suzerainty of Geneva. Not bad at all. Like this city is generating a decent amount of uh, tech resources for me, which is exactly what it should be doing right now. Wangani uh, has basically finished its base, basic infrastructure. So I'm going to get to work on a harbor right now. And I'm one turn away from getting military training. So I don't mind like kind of quote unquote wasting a small amount of production uh, efficiency by building this a little bit early. Hey, I got a free trader from a tribal village. I had planned to get more traders, but I'm pretty happy with a free one. I think I'm going to go ahead and send this one to Wanganui, mainly so that I can pick up this harbour a little bit quicker and get my next trade route faster. Again, I do apologise to all the Maori people and all the New Zealanders, <laughs> all the Kiwis in the comments of me pronouncing the city's names wrong. So there's military training. We're going to go ahead and swap out discipline. because We don't really need discipline anymore. And we're going to plug in veterancy. Right now I'm very happy with this setup, although maybe I don't need maritime industries because I don't plan to build any more units, so discipline will be fine. I could alternatively pick up conscription or equestrian orders if I wanted to sell more resources. I kind of like the idea of getting equestrian orders to sell more resources actually, especially since I can now go ahead and improve this iron over here by picking up a builder in my capital. We got the granary in Huarakawa. I don't know how to say the city's name. I think we're going to go ahead and pick up the water mill here before we go for the harbour. Definitely just want to get these basic infrastructure buildings because they're going to pay dividends over the course of the game. There are some really good trade routes with these cities over here. But again, I'm going to tr prioritize trading with my capital because that's three food, three production. Which is basically like working an extra tile in the city. And it's a really significant amount of production and food. We actually have our very first uh, Great Admiral here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab him. And I'm also going to be able to get a free Quadrireme here. As well as be able to produce naval uh, range units much faster. Which are all things that I'm very happy about. Time to get this iron mine online, which will actually give me an envoy as well with La Venta, another uh, religious city-state. I need to start looking at some of these missions. For example, there are a few trade routes here on this list, and I am going to want to try to do at least some of those. Now, Lisbon does want me to build a harbor, so I'm going to go ahead and put a... Uh, I'm going to put an envoy in with Lisbon because I am currently building a harbor. So when I finish this harbor in seven turns, I will then get Suzerainty of Lisbon and get an extra two gold in every har uh, lighthouse building that I have constructed, which is currently one. But I do have potentially two more on the way, potentially three more up here. So that's going to represent a huge amount of gold. And what I'm basically doing is I'm going to try to use the gold to boost up cities that I settle so they reach their maximum potential faster. I've reached the cap on my horses, so I'm going to go to the resource tab and see who needs horses. And it looks like Russia, Guitarja and England could use some horses. So I'm going to try to sell them to those guys. Uh, it looks like Russia is completely broke, so I guess Guitarja is going to be my patron for my horses right now. They're going to give me three gold per turn and an extra eight gold straight up. And I'll also go ahead and sell some to Victoria. She's going to give me five gold per turn for my horses and I'll sell off uh, an extra 10 to her. I'm uh, sorry, an extra eight to her as well this turn just to pick up that extra two gold per turn, which again is fueling my economy right now. Let's improve the crabs. This goes from a one food, three gold tile to a three food, one production, three gold tile. And it'll only get better as I build more of my harbor buildings. The power of fishing boats as, as coupe is incredible. I do want to try to fill up my land efficiently, so I'm going to settle another city near my capital right here in Kalapoy. It's not a very useful city right now. But it can pick up a harbour and it can pick up a mare and there's a little bit of forest in the local area. So I'm going to use my goals to boost this city with a monument and a granary so that it has nothing to build but its first district, which will be a harbour. I'm also going to plop down a farm on this wheat right here because I can't harvest resources so I may as well improve them and that'll give the city a really good growth tile to uh, continue to expand. A little bit worried about this barb cap over here. 
uh, in the inland area. So I'll have to try to find a unit that I could maybe do something with. Most of my army is over here to the west here. And I have a few boats that I can use. Um, but nothing that's actually going to be able to address this sort of inland problem. So it might be worth my while to stop off and pick up a uh, Toa here in my capital city after this settler. Which means if I'm going to be doing that, I'm going to switch out Equestrian Orders and plug in a GOG because I believe the Toa is a classical era or uh, yeah, a classical era unit. So we'll we'll make make use of that. I have another um I have another governor title. I could promote Pingala with grants. It's not a terrible way to do things. On the other hand, I could get someone like Liang and plop her down in like Wanganui and use that as a city that's going to like centralize my production of builders. So that seems like a pretty useful uh thing to do with Liang and I could also uh, use her to build a bunch of fisheries as time goes on as well. So I think I'm settling the tobacco here. This seems like a pretty good spot. It has a really great harbor. It has a decent amount of forest that I can use with the um, Mare. Uh, it doesn't block any potential settlements up here and it doesn't block any potential settlements up here and it, just, and it also gives me control of the coastline of this continent which is one of my main goals right now. I think I'm going to harvest the Martian here to force the city to grow. It'll bring it up to a three population uh, in a single turn, which is a great use of a builder. And then I might send this builder off to go and prove these furs over here. Theater square completed in Otarapa. I could purchase the Mare. I think I'm going to hard build the Mare in here. It's going to represent a really nice uh, boost and that'll leave my gold to be able to do other things. Speaking of gold doing other things, it's probably going to be boosting this city in here by purchasing tiles like this turtle here and then getting the builder to improve them while I work on the harbor and I want to work on harbors because the more gold I have the faster I can improve all of my other cities and it becomes like this ridiculous snowball city uh, we got the harbor finished in Wanganui which is very nice I'm going to work on the lighthouse I will of course place the theater square however first in order to lock in its production cost uh, it's important to remember when you place a district uh, its production cost can't actually increase so by popping it down you can see here all of these districts, their price is increasing slowly as I reach more and more technologies. But if I pop it down before I'm ready to build it, I basically lock that price in and I can work on other things. So by placing a district like that, you save yourself a very small amount of production. It's a small little efficiency thing that most players should probably be aware of right now. But we'll get this lighthouse in six turns, which will mean another trade route in six turns. I think it's about time I started heading in the direction of shipyard. So I'm going to start getting things like mathematics. Uh, I don't want to research too far ahead of myself. We're still in the classical era and I'm making a ton of science, even though I, I don't really have any specialization towards actually getting science. So I might spend a little bit of time just finishing off classical era technology so I don't suffer too much of a penalty beelining for shipyard. It looks like we're going to clear out another barb cap here and get myself another 30 gold. Very happy with this. These guys have been basically just moving around the coastline picking up a little bit of gold here and there. And all that gold is translating into things like improving the fish and the turtles in my newly settled cities. Another barb camp appeared right close to my capital, but thankfully I have units in the area to take care of it. And I'm actually even going to use this settler to help clear it out because I don't have a military unit really in the area to deal with it. And it also looks like Candy cleared out this barb camp over here to the east of them. That was going to cause me a few issues. I still am going to fill, finish the Toa though, because it represents a little bit of error score. And there's potential for me to get another Golden Age here. Let's pop a cap down on this furs. That's going to give me access to another luxury. I could be selling a lot of these luxuries to the AI. Like for example, turtles. Although a couple of the AIs actually already have access to turtles. Russia is completely broke. Maybe the Ottomans would like to buy my turtles. Four gold per turn doesn't seem like a huge amount when I could be selling it to England, for example. And they are also giving me four gold per turn. Well, whatever. I'll take the four gold per turn. It's better than nothing. I think you're getting to see the power of, of amenities here in this game. I have a 10% production boost in here, which represents about 2.7 production, uh, which means roughly every uh, 10 turns, I'm essentially getting an extra turn of production, which is a kind of a way to think about that. So if you imagine uh, for, for other players, they're, for every 10 turns, they get 10 turns of production. But for me, for every 10 turns, I get 11 turns. And it's the same for science. It's the same for faith. And it's the same for gold. So amenities are actually pretty nice if you can get them positive. I just I just don't think it's a huge hindrance if you have negative amenities. That's something to uh, to consider. I think I say a lot of the time that amenities aren't very important. But I, I think it really is a game mechanic that needs to be respected. Um, 
I just kind of wish they were just a little bit more impactful on the positive side of things. Watermill and the... Um, all of the basic infrastructure is finished over here in Warakera, which is what I'm going to call it because that is a big ass long name that I have no idea how to pronounce. And similarly, I'm going to place the theater square to lock in its price and go ahead and work on the harbor so that I can get that harbor built up and get a trade route running. I decided to chop out this forest here so that I could place the mare there later. It does kind of suck that I lose a pretty good forest that was like a really good productive tile, but I think getting the little bit of extra adjacency on my mare was worth it. I'm also going to be investing into this city. I'm going to grab myself a granary. The city was almost at its growth cap, and now it's going to have a little bit more buffer zone and extra growth as well. I do want to also purchase a monument in here, but I'll have to wait four turns. There is feudalism, the all important technology. And the question is, which of these two cards is it more important than? I think it's more important than urban planning. Uh, to be able to get extra build charges because I can make up for the lack of plus one production with the extra builder charges. My Agog card became redundant. Did I actually finish the Toa? No, I didn't. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in Feudal Contract, move Colonization up here, and then plug in Serfdom so that I get Settlers and more builder charges. Now I really want to unlock Harbor District Adjacency pretty early into this game. I think that's going to have to be precipitated by me switching away to something like Classical Republic. So I think if I'm going to go for Naval Tradition, that change is going to have to come. Because I want to have... So here, here, here's my bit of a conundrum right now. I want to have three economic policy cards plugged in. I want to have Serfdom, Colonization, and Harbor Adjacency. So I think I might delay Harbor Adjacency until I've got Shipyards. And so I can just go straight for exploration. And then when I have the extra room for that, I'll come back for uh, the economic policy of harbor adjacency. There is the Toa giving me an extra four era score. I'm also going to want to build a PA with them. I think, I do you get the extra? I don't remember if you get the extra era score for that. I think I'll give it a go and see if it works. I'm very glad that I had these couple of quadri rooms in the area to take care of any barb camp spawns that are on the coast. Now this city is up and running so I no longer need to worry too much about the um about running the trade route to my capital. I could put it in a different city to run that trade route but I'm actually going to put this into my capital because my capital has a bunch of positive amenities meaning they get extra gold and send this trade route to one of these city states to pick up that extra envoy. Now, I am cutting out a lot of footage here, but really, it's like the vast majority of it is just exploration footage. Um, and I think you guys should have a pretty good idea of how to explore efficiently. It basically involves micromanaging your scouts and moving one tile at a time, or two tiles if it's necessary. And also doing things like positioning yourself to escape into the water if it's also necessary. Finish the lighthouse in Wang and Nui, which means we can get our hands on another trader. I could use my faith or my gold to purchase that trader. I think I'm going to use my faith to get that trader. And I'm going to grab it in my capital city so that I can keep churning out these envoys here. I'm going to trade with Jerusalem first. That'll give me suzerainty of Jerusalem and reveal some terrain as well as a tribal village over here that I might be able to pick up if I can get a scout in the area. But more importantly, that gave me room for another trade route that I'll be able to pick up uh, in a couple of turns. Now that the lighthouse is finished in here, I'm going to go ahead and work on the theater square because that's going to be the way that I generate tourism and faith and uh, all that other great stuff that we're looking for in this game. Never have I seen like territory so open and yet so terrible to actually settle. Uh, all the good land seems to be on the western side of the continent, which means I would have to run my units around this way, which is highly inconvenient. Really cool tip, by the way, if you're not sure where all the tribal villages are, you just click this, do a search and you'll be able to find them. So like there's one down here, there's one here. I have a scout on the way to pick these up. There's another one over here. And I do in fact have a scout in a nearby area that I could send up to go grab that one. As well as one over here, but I remember there was a barb camp uh, unit standing on top of that. And one over here that I'm kind of mooching my way over to grab after I grab this one. It's a helpful little tip that a lot of people don't realize. You just click this map search pin. I'm not sure if that's on console. I do apologize. Some, some of the things that I say about the game aren't actually true on console, which makes me feel kind of bad because I'm giving you guys tips that aren't true. I really should get the game on console and learn to play it. So 
so that I can give you guys more accurate tips. But we're sending a trade route to Mexico City, not only for the plus tw uh, 12 gold per turn, but also for the envoy, which is setting us up for suzerainty later on. I'm going to use my gold to buy a monument in Opango. And you know what? I think we've made significant progress. And I think this game is going to be really, really interesting. Not really as a challenge, but more as um, just an illustration of uh, an interesting game where you kind of have a continent to yourself. I, I thought it would be a fun way to play the Maori. It, it's maybe not like super challenging or interesting, but every now and again, you got to have a game like this where you kick back and have a good time. I will be doing... I, I do plan to do a 12-player domination game, so that's sort of on the cards. I don't know when I'm going to do it or which save I'm going to do it, but that's going to be it for now. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. I love you all very much, and bye-bye.